as much as you possibly can. This Carlos Castaneda, I think, is unreadable after about page 75. But so, if you feel differently. And, you know, I don't want to praise a book unjustifiably. So if the book is really uh, not worth <laughs> going further with, I think you can say. Okay, so um, he tells in this introduction about meeting this Yaqui Indian chap. This is about page Roman numeral 28 of uh, the introduction. And uh, the man is, he meets him at a bus station in southern Arizona. But actually, the guy comes from northern New Mexico, places that I, I've been to northern Mexico, but only to the tourist places. In other words, I've only been to like um, Baja California, Ensenada, and uh, further down, Bahia to Los Angeles, and places like that, but not, it's not even northern Mexico. And this is Sonora. And how many have been to Sonora? You have. So we've got one person. What's it like there? Is it the same as Texas or something? I mean, I've just driven by. I just driven by. So none of us have ever been there. So this is where he's going to ultimately go down in that area to uh, visit this fellow uh, when they finally do this. So he starts telling them about this secret knowledge that Brujos. No. And there's a word I think we do obviously want to know. In fact, I was just seeing um, an advertisement for a, which movie it was, um, where they were showing a brujo, and the person who was making this movie, I don't know which one it was, but obviously had read this book, and it was you know, depicting one of these witch sort of like medicine people. Anyway, as he defined here, it's a sorcerer, someone who controls evil powers, or even maybe good powers. Um, other groups of American Indians or Native Americans would call such individuals by a different name. For instance, medicine man. Uh, you know, using an English expression, medicine. Why would they apply medicine to such a personnel? Could be healing qualities, but also medicine because it can help to heal has power. So that's a good point, healers do. But also I think more than that, I, I don't think the medicine men, well I guess they were sometimes healers. Like in that case, I guess you should say Jesus, as he's pictured in the scripture, is a medicine man. In fact, that's, to my mind, what he looks like in the gospel. He's kind of medicine man. He goes around healing all sorts of odd things. Um, aside from other sort of miracles, but mostly he's healing people by touching them, hands on, different things like that. But at one point, even in the gospels, if you're a uh, admirer of the Gospels, it says the power went out of him when someone touched him. How many are familiar with passages like that in the Gospel? And the power went out of him. So, you know, he's a power man. He's got, he's got power. Uh, even the Gospels uh, present him or admit that. And that's what the medicine people, medicine men, are supposed to have power. Power for healing, power for vision, power for different things. You know, they possess power, power added, if you like, and that's the translates into American language of medicine, because medicine is powerful. So, a medicine man has power, the powers of the elemental universe, if you like. So, they are what we talked about before as a kind of shaman or shaman. The shaman or shaman has power that he or she gets in an informal, non-organized, charismatic way from the powers of the universe or the environment or some magical activities that that person is involved in. So um, that's really, I think, what the Spanish brujo is to some extent involved in, but it normally uh, has or as he says here, sometimes, more often than not, has 
evil connotation, not good. Whereas a medicine man, I think, almost is universally considered good. That is, a medicine man should help. He may be a quack, he may be a fake, but he should be helping in some manner. And later on, when we read Black Elk speaks, Black Elk is a medicine man. He, he really is a medicine man uh, of the Sioux Indians. And, um, you know, he, he was real, came from a family of medicine men. His whole thing is to help his people. That's how he sees himself. So, um, he speaks here about a benefactor and um, an apprentice. And he says Don Juan chose him <coughs> as an apprentice. That is, the writer here is now already being chosen by Don Juan as an apprentice. Why would Don Juan choose this jerk as his apprentice? It boggles the imagination, but obviously, since this guy doesn't seem to have had a lot of money, it wasn't because he was paying him a lot. If he was paying him much at all, I think he must have paid him something. Uh, of course, a UCLA grant to someone in uh, Southern Arizona might seem like quite a lot of money <laughs> if you're compared to getting handouts at Greyhound bus stations panhandling, so actually the uh, state of California grant might be uh, pretty lucrative by comparison to that. So I'm sure this guy paid Don Water, covered his expenses, whatever he did for him, if he really existed, so there was that. But what was the, would be any of the other reason why Don Water <coughs> accept this fellow if he did as a so-called apprentice? Huh? Yes, yeah, spread the knowledge, right. That's exactly right. That's the same in Black Elk. When we get to Black Elk later on after uh, Malcolm X, uh, we'll see that uh, Black Elk knows that this man who comes from this uh, Anglo guy, what's his name, the guy, I know you recall, the American professor who comes to Black Elk? He yeah, edits the book anyway. Uh, Neardhart? What? Is it Neardhart or is that? Yeah, yeah, Neihart. 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 Neihart is the man who puts the book together and uses the Black Elk's words and edits the famous book. And actually, Castaneda is trying to do what Neihart did. So he wants to do with the drug Indian southwestern northern Mexican culture, not the Plains Indian visionary culture. Because uh, what people like uh, Black Elk do, not like this, I don't think that the Sioux were drug people. There may have been some druggies, but I don't think that's what they were really into. But their main religious activity that produced the kind of insight that they were looking for was the sun dance. And the sun dance was uh, almost a court 